We are going to take a closer look at position time graph. We are going to see what shapes it can have and can we predict some things straight from the shape. Can we relate a position time graph to how fast something is moving, how slow it is moving or in other words can we relate it to the speed with which an object may be covering those positions in time. Position time graph indicates the position of an object at different time. A velocity time graph indicates the velocity of the object at different time. So, both speed or velocity at an instant of time for an object can be inferred from position time graph. Let us look at some of these position time graphs. There is A in which there is a straight line going up. In B, there is a line which is going down or has a negative slope and C interestingly is a line parallel to the x axis and graph D shows a curve with the curvature pointing upwards. This picture shows so many lines A B is a straight line then there is a curve and there is yet another line which is broken in parts but is made up of straight lines. Let us see section by section what the position time graph can tell us. Look at A B. This straight line shows and the steepness of this line shows that the position is changing very fast. This is faster than the straight line section which is marked as C or the straight line section which is marked from D to E. To understand it a bit more, let us see what is the meaning of the position time graph where it is parallel to the x axis or the time axis. The stationary segment here is basically showing that the position has not changed in this duration and therefore, the object must be in one location only. One location as the time passes only means that the body must be stationary or at rest. Look at the curve. How do you interpret a curve on a position time graph? Various sections can be imagined on this line. The speed is increasing because the distance covered in known time intervals is increasing. This kind of a graph is for speed increasing graph and therefore, shows that the object is moving slow and then faster and faster. What about this last section? What does this imply? The line going towards the time axis though straight means that the position has changed by traveling equal distances in equal intervals of time or as we call it uniform motion and the object must be coming back to the original position. From a straight line graph, position time graph, it is easy to predict the velocity because the slope is fixed all along and therefore, you can say the slope of position time graph is going to give us the velocity which would be the same at all the locations in that time interval. But if it is a curve, you cannot justify this. So, when you have a curve, then how does the position change and consequently the velocity to be interpreted from that? Let us take a look at this graph. Velocity at an instant is the slope of the tangent to the graph at that instant. Now, this tangent is going to continuously change. If you are seeing this graph carefully, the graph is facing upwards. It means that the curvature is such that its center of curvature must lie somewhere above this line. So, it would indicate that the slope at different locations as we move from P 1 towards P 2 let us say is going to become more and more. So, the object must be covering lesser distance in different time or you can say the velocity is changing 
So, the velocity is increasing as we go towards p 2 from p 1, because the slope is going to become more and more. Let us look at another graph, which is showing position time graph for a car. So, if you have a car somewhere, which is moving, we say that it accelerates first, then moves with a steady speed and then it acquires a fixed velocity and moves say on a highway. It may slow down, it may change the value of speeds as it moves. This is just a graph as an example of a car. So, this is position time and as you notice the time is changing very fast. So, in 4 seconds you have barely covered any distance and as you go along and move to say 18 seconds, the distance travelled is some 200 odd meters. The corresponding velocity time graph for the same car will look something like this. The velocity is in meters per second on the y axis and the time is placed in seconds. So, notice how fast the velocity has changed in the duration of 0 to 4, it has hardly acquired some value, but then it shot up up to 10 seconds and this value became almost 25 meters per second. And then for some time, the car moved with the constant speed. This constant speed is indicative from the position time graph as a straight line and therefore, here the horizontal line parallel to the x axis shows that the speed was constant. So, the velocity being constant or speed being constant uh, in motion in one dimension can be said in a way and accepted because the direction is not changing. So, velocity of the car is constant and what happens after that? It suddenly becomes low and becomes 0. That means, the car must have stopped. Did it indicate on our graph of the position time graph? Let us see them together. The position time graph and just below it is the velocity time graph and the timings are matching and you can see that the position of the object becoming the same for certain duration. That means, the car must have slowed down and then it must have stopped. Now, the curve, the position time graph, if you divide it into three sections, one when there was a straight line part and second when there were curves. The curves appeared first in say 0 to 8 seconds, which were having a curvature in such a way that the center of curvature would lie above this line. And in this portion where it is stopping, the curvature is such that the center of curvature would lie below the line. Take a close look at that. So, the straight portion and the curved lines are shown by the arrows. So, the straight line is the central part on the position time graph and the curved lines are shown. Another way of looking at it is that if you consider the slope of the line in the portion from 4 to 8 seconds, let us say, the slope of the tangent is going on increasing. And if you considered it from 16 to 18 seconds, you are finding that the slope of the tangent is going on decreasing. So, that is another way of looking at the position time graph in terms of the slope at different positions on it. Slope increasing and slope decreasing on the curved line are indicative of the velocity becoming more or velocity becoming less. So, at a glance from a position time graph, you can predict whether the object is moving with constant velocity or with increasing velocity or with decreasing velocity as we considered for the car. We drew the graph for the car position time graph and consequently also drew the velocity time graph for the same car and match the two to show how this was possible to see at a glance. Now, the slope of the graph is given at a point as x 2 minus x 1 upon t 2 minus t 1. So, the velocity that we describe as the rate of change of position becomes delta x the change in position upon delta t the change in time. 
at an instant for a continuously changing value of position with time, you say instantaneous velocity is given as limit of delta t tending towards 0 of delta x upon delta t. Now, notice delta t tending towards 0 does not mean that the instantaneous value of velocity will become 0, because delta x may be any value in that short time interval. Why we are taking the time interval as small? Because we want to consider the velocity at an instant. At an instant, the object would not move at all and therefore, this is just a notional description of talking about it. In the speedometers of our cars, we measure this instantaneous value of velocity. However, the measuring must be done over a certain short time interval. Consider the speed of light. Say, when you talk about speed of light, the delta x is so large in one second. So, you cannot say delta x tending towards 0 also means that the velocity is becoming 0. So, in integration or in terms of calculus, you can put this as dx by dt, which would say if you sum up all the various positions acquired by the body over a certain distance of displacement into very small sections and then you were considering at a particular small interval of time, how much is the displacement, this would give you the value for velocity. So, you have learned the position time graph and a velocity time graph, the meaning of position time graph and the meaning of velocity time graph, relation between position time and velocity time graph. If in a position time graph, we have a straight line parallel to the time axis, it means the object must be stationary. If it is an inclined line, it may mean constantly increasing or constantly decreasing velocity. And importantly, a curved graph will show a non-uniform change in velocity. If the curve faces upwards, the velocity is increasing. If the curve faces downwards, the velocity is decreasing. So, you can use your position time graph to create a velocity time graph and use it for calculation or just to show the motion of objects around you. Today, we intend to concentrate on graphs, the distance time graph, the velocity time graph and the acceleration time graph. We shall also see how a good graph should be drawn. So, we start with displacement. You know already the displacement is the difference between the final position vector of a body and the initial position vector of a body. I will show you here how we get the displacement. This is the initial position vector this is the final position vector and this is the displacement vector b minus vector a. We shall denote displacement by capital S with an arrow on it, whereas the distance covered we shall show by small s. You know already that average speed is defined as the total distance covered divided by the total time taken. Now, the distance covered would depend upon the path taken as shown in this diagram. We go from A to B and we take a very meandering path and if we measure the length along this path, that would be the distance travelled. Whereas, from the direct uh, arrow from A to B shows the displacement and the displacement from A to B is the positive displacement and if we take displacement from B to A, it can be negative displacement. So, displacement can be positive as well as negative, whereas the distance covered is always positive. Here, I show you this, that you go from A to B and go from B to A, your distance covered would be twice 
the distance between A and B that is 2 L whereas the displacement would be 0 because you started from A and you have come back to the point A. You know already that velocity is equal to the slope of the displacement time graph this we did in the last lecture. Now the slope of a linear graph is constant it is the same everywhere. So, if the graph between displacement and time is linear then the velocity is uniform that means the slope is the same everywhere. You can see how we measure the slope we measure the slope by taking at a certain time the displacement and divided by the time taken that is how we find the slope and if the graph is linear the slope is constant and therefore the velocity is uniform. However, if the graph is not linear as shown here then the velocity at a point like p for example is found by the slope at p that is delta s by delta t at the point q the slope is found again by delta s by delta t and you can see that the slopes at these two points are different this means that the velocity is changing it is not constant if the velocity is not constant then we have to define what is known as instantaneous velocity at a point and that is defined as vector v is equal to the differentiation of vector s that is ds by dt. Just like velocity instantaneous speed can be defined as ds by dt remember that small s denotes the distance covered whereas capital S with an arrow on it shows the displacement. How do we relate these two quantities the instantaneous velocity and speed let us take the body moving on a curve and we take two points very short time away from A to B the distance is covered in a very short time dt since the distance is very short the displacement would be equal to the distance covered and therefore if we now find the speed it would be equal to the magnitude of the velocity that is ds by dt would be equal to the magnitude of d by dt of s vector and this means that the speed is just the magnitude of the instantaneous velocity. How do we plot a good graph? It is a convention to plot the independent variable along the x axis and the dependent variable along the y axis. But what is an independent variable and what is a dependent variable? How do we decide that which quantity is independent variable and which quantity is dependent variable? Let us see it depends upon the situation. Here I have drawn uh, data from a certain experiment which was done where we found the speed of sound in a certain material as a function of temperature. You can see the temperature is increasing and the speed of sound is also increasing along with it. And in this case the change in the speed of sound is a consequence of the change in temperature. Therefore, we designate temperature as independent variable and the speed of sound as dependent variable. But remember the temperature is not always an independent variable as I said it depends upon the situation. For example, if we were considering the rise in temperature of a liquid as it is heated then the temperature would become a dependent variable. The time for which the liquid is heated would then become independent variable. So, dependent variable and independent variable they all depend upon the situation which we have at that time. Now, points to consider while drawing a graph first identify independent and dependent variables very clearly then choose scales so that the graph fills most of the available space scales must be convenient for plotting the points on the graph and they must be mentioned clearly on the graph itself. Remember that larger the graph that you can draw in the given space easier it is to interpret it. 
Let us draw a graph and illustrate these points. I have here a data from the journey of a bus. You see that in the first column we have time, say 8, 8.30 a.m., 9 a.m. and 9.30 a.m. and so on. And the last column we have distance from the starting point, 0 kilometer at 8 o'clock, 20 kilometer at 8.30 and so on. And we now draw a graph point by point. See that on the y-axis we have taken distance, which is in this case a dependent variable. On the x-axis we have taken time, which is in this case an independent variable. And we draw each point, first point, second point in that data, third point, fourth point in that data, and fifth point. And ultimately we join all these points by a line. This line is the graph between distance and time. And what is the use of this graph? You can see that if we need to know when the bus had covered a distance of let us say 10 kilometers, what time at that time uh, was there on the clock. And you can see the time would be uh, given by this point. Similarly, we shall see when the bus was 70 kilometers away, what time was it? Again, we draw a perpendicular line and read the time on the time axis. We can also extrapolate. We can find out where would the bus be at 11 o'clock. And we find that this would be at about 120 kilometers. So the graph serves many purposes. It tells us the speed. It tells us where the bus was at a certain time or what distance it had covered at a certain time and so on. Now we are ready to consider motion in one dimension. If we can read the various slopes at various times, then we can say whether the speed is increasing or decreasing. In this case, this blue line is uniform speed, where this red and dark line, they are showing the speed is increasing. On the dark line, of course, it is increasing faster because the slope is increasing. Now, if we have velocity time graph, then the slope of this graph would show us acceleration. Why? Because velocity by time is acceleration. Therefore, if we have velocity time graph, then its slope would be acceleration. And if the graph is uniform or linear, that means the acceleration is uniform. And most of the time, we deal with uniform acceleration earlier classes.